Okay, in this video, we are going to look at setting up our game maker ready to start creating some of the assets that we're going to use for our game. Now, before we actually start, what we need to do is click on new blank and then give this project a name. So I'm going to call it game version one. Um, now, be mindful of where you're saving this. Uh, you will need to save it into a certain location. Um, and if you don't know, please ask for advice on where to save it. But I'm just going to save this in my default location at the moment, which is my Game Maker Studio 2 folder. Once you're ready, click on Let's Go, and you'll then see this. This is the default view that we have when we open our Game Maker Studio 2 up. Now, on the right hand side here, you've got a number of folders. So we use folders obviously to make sure we're organized. Now, in Game Maker, it doesn't actually call them folders, it calls them groups. Uh, but if you just remember them as folders, that'll be absolutely fine. So the first thing that we need to do with this is think about how we're going to organize our work. Um, and if you are going to have a, a new player for every level, or if you can have one player throughout, if you can have different enemies for each level, or if you can have different enemies throughout. So I'm going to give you a few sort of examples here. So I'm going to start off by clicking on my sprites folder. Then I'm going to right click and go down to create group. Now when I click on create group, it comes up there, group one, and we can type over this. So I'm going to call this one level one, and then press enter, that saves it. I'm going to make another folder now. So notice what I've done, I've clicked back on the root here. So I've clicked on the sprite folder, gone back then to create group, and we're going to call this one level two. We're going to make another one then for level three. And then I'm going to make a players folder. Now, the reason I make a player folder is my player is going to be the same throughout level one, two, and three. Um, and, you know, you there's no harm in you putting three different players in this player folder. It's your choice entirely. Now, I'm also going to have a menus folder. So I'm going to right click on this and we're going to go down to create group and we're going to have menus because we're going to have a main menu. And now inside of each level one, two, and three, I'm going to make a few subfolders. So I'm going to click on level one first, right click, go to create group, and we're going to call this enemies. And I'm going to do the same thing again, click on level one, and we're going to right click, go to create group, and we're going to call this one collectibles. And we're going to do the same thing now for level one and level two or level three. So let's create group. And then let's do another one then for enemies. Okay, so I've got my basic structure set up, ready, set to go. Now, once you've got your sprites structure set up, It'll expand and contract depending on what you want and depending on what you're working on. Now, as you keep this uh, organized and neat and tidy, um, it'll make your work a lot easier to obviously see and fault find. But we also need to make sure that whatever structure we use in the sprites, we also use in the object as well. So I'm going to do this very quickly on the objects. Right click, create group, and we're going to call this level one. Now, I'm not going to do every folder in here. If you want to, you can, but I'm just going to set up the basics here so you can kind of see that we've got a few things set up, ready to go. And you can always add to these later, right? You're never fixed. Okay, so I'm going to just close that off and we're going to look then at our sprites. Now, there's a few things you've got to remember with sprites and this is quite important. So you've got a few different options. This here is a static image. So let's just take something simple like a coin. So we can see here, we've got a coin and that's what's called a static image. Now we've got this, which is the same sort of thing, but it's an animated image. Now you can animate these, no problem at all. We can do this in Game Maker. It's a great piece of software and it has animation uh, for us built in so we can actually make multiple frames. The one thing you've got to remember is though, that if we animate something, it's a lot more work. So as an example, if we wanted to draw this animation out, which we will frame by frame, you can see it's a lot more work. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six different frames here, whereas the static image is only one. Now that's important because if you're not that quick at working, you might want to do some 
animated images and some static. If you are very quick at working, you may want to make them all animated. Likewise, if you're not very quick at working at all, you might want to make just all static images. Now, the more complex the image, the more frames you're going to have. If you look at this as an example, this is a chicken and this is the chicken running. As you can see, there's all different frames there. So if you look, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 different frames there. And they're all in slightly different motions. Look, the legs are in different positions. The head is in different positions. The uh, hair on the top is in slightly different positions as well. And the beak does change slightly. Now, what this will mean is the more frames you have in, typically the smoother the animation and the better it'll look overall. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna look at drawing our sprites. How do we do this? Well, quite easy. We're gonna start off by uh, looking at the player. So if I click on my player here, I'm clicking on my player folder. So I'm gonna right click and then go to create and then we're gonna go down to sprite here. Now this is the basis of the sprite editor. We have got a name here where we name our sprite. We've got an edit image button. We've got an import. Um, you've got this here. This is like a canvas where you'll actually see your sprite once we've drawn it. Um, and you've got various other things as well in here. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this S player. Now the reason I prefix this with the word S is because it's a sprite. Later on in a few videos time when we make the object, we will use something called O player. Fairly simple, fairly easy, nothing too complex for that. The size of the sprite there is set to 64 pixels by 64 pixels. Now I'm not gonna alter that for the player, but we probably will alter it for other things later on. Okay, so to begin to make our image, we're gonna click on this edit image button, and then you'll notice this image editor will load. Now, even though it looks quite basic, it's actually a quite a nice, powerful editor, and it's fairly easy to use. On the top here, you've got your frames. So when we want to animate things, we are gonna use these frames here. Uh, and the main part here, you have your canvas, your image drawing, and then on the right-hand side, towards the middle, you've got your toolbox with various different tools on there. And the good thing with this is, a lot of them are quite recognizable. So you've got your uh, drawing tool there, your paintbrush, you've got an eraser, you've got a uh, paint fill tool, you've got some shape tools uh, where you can do an outline or a fill, uh, you've got a color picker selection tool, a magic selection tool, uh, paint selection tools. So you've got lots and lots of different tools here. We're not gonna use them all, uh, but we are certainly gonna use some of them uh, in this uh, demo. Now, the other thing to note on the top there as well, you've also got some colors which are there, which is quite nice, it's easy, it's nothing too difficult with that one. Um, and you've also got then a few other things then at the top, such as brush sizes, which are very, very important, and we are gonna use those uh, when we do our quick little demos as well. Now, what we are gonna look at uh, first are these layers, and this is probably one of the most important things in Photoshop, you build a image up using layers. Uh, so any image that you create, obviously you should separate the layers. This is exactly the same thing, okay? So what we are gonna do is look at adding a layer. And if we click on the little uh, add layer button here, you can see it's come up with layer one. And if I wanted to, I can just double click this layer and then we can rename it. So for example, I'm gonna call this head because we're gonna do one for the head and we're gonna do one for body, one for legs as well. Now, if I close this, you'll notice now the name has been changed, which is there and that's lovely, that's good to go. Now, what we are gonna look at doing is drawing a head. So the first thing we're gonna do is click on here and we're gonna click then like a darkish color. Now you'll notice uh, if I hover over the canvas, I'm just gonna draw something very quickly like that. You can see it's not really a thick line. If I increase the brush size, you can see that one's thicker. And if we go up again, that one's thicker. And let's go up again. So you get the point. The bigger this, uh, the brush size is, the bigger the stroke is gonna be. And that works the same for the eraser. So if I wanted to raise this, if I click on the middle one there, look, that's the size of a eraser. If I click on the next one up, that's the size. And if I click on the biggest one then, that's the size there. You can also go bigger by using this slider on the top. And you can see there, the slider, as I'm moving it, it'll go bigger or smaller, depending on how many pixels you want to cover. 
So I'm just gonna raise this really quickly because that's not what we wanna do. And um, what we're gonna do is start drawing. So I'm gonna choose probably a two, right? So a, not the smallest size, but certainly not the largest. Uh, I'm gonna go with a darkish color. And we're gonna draw the head for this. Now, um, if any of you have seen Sean Spaulding's uh, characters, this is gonna be a, pretty much a clone of his. It's a nice easy one to start with and it's gonna allow us to go through a load of tools as well. So what I'm gonna do is click on my pencil tool and we're just gonna sort of draw. So I'm gonna draw around up and around like that. And what we're gonna do then is just draw down for the character's face. Now, if you've made a mistake like I have there, that's not gonna be good, that's fine, no problem. Click on the eraser tool and we can just erase that and we can get rid of it like so. And then you can just redraw then whatever it is you wanted to do, like so. Likewise, if you find that you've missed uh, something up here or you've messed it up a little bit, again, I'm just gonna click the eraser tool and we're gonna erase that. And then what we'll do is we'll just redraw very quickly and just remember what size you used so the sizes are very, very, very important. Okay, so first of all, we've just drawn two shapes and now we need to color them. So if I click on the paint bucket here and click on the color, I can then click here. Now you can see that there, that's added in. Maybe if I want a slightly different shade, I may want to go darker or lighter. Um, what we do is we double click on the color and you can see now this color picker tool comes up. So how I got that up was just double clicking and you can see there's lots and lots and lots of different options. So I can change uh, the value there so to make things darker. I can also go lighter if I go the other opposite way. I can change the hue and saturation to get a completely different color or I can change the color entirely using the drag here. Now what I wanna do is go for a darker color. So I'm gonna go for something like that and click okay and that's done there. Now you notice it hasn't put it back in because now what we've got to do is just paint over. As you can see, that's put it in there. Now if you've made a mistake, there is an undo button. If you click on edit and undo, and that undoes things for you as well. Now if we wanted to get a pinkish sort of color, you can start off by choosing the color you want here. And let's go in like that, that looks okay. I'm happy with that. And let's now draw two eyes. So I click on my paintbrush and let's just go back then to the color. We need to make these a bit bigger, not too big. Let's go size four and let's go two eyes there. And let's go with a smaller one there for the mouth. Okay. Okay, so that's our head done and we've got that ready set to go. So let's add in another layer. And um, what we're gonna do with this is just drag it down slightly and we're gonna double click on the layer here and we're gonna call this for body. Press enter, that saves it. And let's just draw a body. Now there's a temptation with this to just do that and then try and fill the color. So watch what happens. If I fill this now with say a blue, you can see the whole thing gets filled blue. Now, why? Well, if I turn this layer off here, you can see that this object isn't actually complete. This object is incomplete. So when we click here, it's filling the whole thing. Now, what we need to make sure is that this at the top is a single closed item. So now when I go back to my fill, I'm only filling the inside here. Likewise, now if I turn the head back on, you can see it fits there quite well. Now you might find when we come to the legs, so I'm gonna click a new layer, drag that down, and let's double click on this and call it legs. You might find you haven't left enough space. So what happens if you haven't left enough space? Well, there's a few things we can do. If you click on that individual layer and then click the pan image tool, you can move this around as one item. So everything on that one layer will move. Likewise, if we switch then to the body layer, which is here, and we can also move that. What happens if you wanna rescale it or resize it? Well, you can kind of do that, but you have gotta be very careful. So if we click on the select, and let's say if we copy and paste it, or cut and paste it, what you notice then is our um, 
image actually becomes a brush size and you can see the brush size there is 42 so if we make that smaller say 37 you can see then it's much makes a much smaller body like so and again it still works it's fine nothing wrong with that but it just makes it's a quick way of making things smaller there now let's go into the legs what we're going to do is we're going to draw some legs so i've clicked on my draw tool i've clicked on my pencil tool and we've got the correct color and let's just draw one set of legs there one set of legs there okay cookie we're also going to we're going to draw some arms so we're going to draw um one like that right what we now need to do is animate this so how do we animate well if i right click on this frame at the top copy and then right click and paste what it does is it makes a duplicate now we can right click and go to duplicate frames which does exactly the same thing it doesn't matter which one you do but what you do need to do is make sure the legs move a small amount on each frame now i'm going to just duplicate these frames a few times and what we are then going to do is go into each individual frame make sure we're on the legs and we're going to raise the legs And then we're going to redraw. And then we just repeat. So we erase the legs. We then redraw. Okay, now I don't know if this is gonna to work too well, but we'll see. The more frames you have in and the smoother you do your animation, the better it's gonna look. But let's just see, we've got five frames here. Let's play this. Now, this is a little bit too quick. So we can actually see what's happening. This will happen. So let's close this S player. And then let's change this value here from 30 frames per second. Let's go down to 10. And then let's click edit image again. And let's see what that does. Okay, so it gives the illusion that the feet are moving. So what we can do with this is we can also add in a little bit more to this. So let's click the head. Let's click on the move and then let's move his head down a little bit. I'm going to move it down one frame here, two frames here, and then one frame there. In fact, I'm probably going to go down one more here. And then let's just do one more there. And let's see what that's done. Okay, so by doing that now, our head is moving and our legs are moving. Now, although our player is facing towards the right, don't worry, we can use code to make sure that they face towards the left as well. When we press the left arrow, we can do that, no problem at all. Now, to save this, all you do is you close this S player. And you can see it gives you a quick preview. You might not be able to see the background depending on what color you've used because obviously the color of the background of this is uh, like a checkered black and dark gray. So you probably won't be able to see it. If I play it, you might just about make it out that you can see there is some sort of movement there. But that is essentially everything that you need to start creating some basic sprites. Now, you will need to create a sprite for each of your enemies. You'll need to create a sprite for each of your collectibles. If you want to animate them, I've just shown you very quickly how to animate things. It will take you a little bit of time to draw, uh, but once you get into the swing of things, you understand how to use some of these tools, you'll be absolutely fine with it.